All right, guys, you can see the weather has gotten a little colder here in uh, Georgia. It's probably 40 degrees outside, but uh, I'm starting uh, doing some minor repairs on this 82300SD. First thing I want to show you guys is the, uh, the driver's seat. So <clears throat> the way these seats operate, there's three motors underneath here, and attached to the motors are some cables. And let me see if I can show you guys so when you move the seat control see the back is moving forward the back works the up and down works but watch the forward and backward I don't know if you guys can hear that the motor is turning but the seat is not moving and what that is is there's a cable attached to the motor that goes to the gear and uh, turns the gear uh, is just unbolt and remove the seat uh, and then we'll get the seat onto the uh, workbench basically you have uh, four 10 millimeter bolts and luckily we can reach them you can see back here we've removed the 10 millimeter here and over there and then there's a little cap you can pop off it exposes a 10 millimeter there we need to undo that one And you'll see behind there, there's a concave washer. All right. The concave side goes to the transmission tunnel. So you see it's concave. When you put it back together, the concave side goes to the transmission tunnel. All right. So now that we got the seat belt, uh, I guess, attachment bar, whatever you want to call that, that's loose. Oh, we should be able to there we go uh we'll we'll try to lean the seat back first i'm going to straighten the back all the way up the back of the seat vertical that'll make it much easier to get out there we go we'll put that like that and then we can slowly uh we'll rotate the seat out you can remove it with this bar attached but i think we can pull that back There we go. That'll make it a little easier to get out. I need both hands, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull this this uh, the bar out. Okay, you see how I just pulled out the, that's the seatbelt mounting bracket. That's what we'll call it. I'm sure there's a fancy name for it. We pulled that out and that just makes it easier to get the seat out. Then we can lean the seat back like that. And you see, I can undo uh, these plugs under the seat. And let's see, there's a, there's our cable right there that we're going to replace. And let's go ahead and unplug some of this stuff. Okay, after you have the seat motor control plug undone, and you can see here we've undone, I think this that's the uh, seat belt warning light plugs in uh, right there then you can get the seat out and you can actually see there's one of the cables there's another cable but those are the what we're going to uh, test when we get on the bench so let's go ahead and uh, roll this seat out of here this is the uh, kind of the hard part if we want to lift this seat we want to turn it and come around this corner without without scraping up anything on the interior. There you go. And that's how you do it. Oh, that thing is heavy. All right, we're gonna go get this on the workbench now. All right, so we have the seat up on the, uh, repair bench 
And here's what we're looking at back here. So the way this works, there's your plug and we'll apply 12 volt power to these. And you have a cable. One's the uh, forward and backward, one's the tilt, and one is the seat back. And here's the cables that actually run. So you can run into the motors here, here, and here. So we're gonna do a test and we'll find the uh, forward and backward one that's not working and we will fix that. All right, guys, here's how you test. You get, I have a little, uh, this is just a 12 volt, uh, a jump pack for jump starting cars, but it provides 12 volt. It's a great testing, uh, testing tool. And we're just gonna clip one on there, the other there. Okay, and let me show you what we're working with. These pins, the way they work, uh, one is ground, one is hot. So you do this one and this one, and or this one and this one, or this one and this one. It just goes down the row, ground and hot. And we'll just see which one's ground, which one's hot. There's our culprit right there. All right, that one's working. That one's working. All right, it's this third one right here. I'm sorry, it's the second set of pins. There we go. It is this cable right here. And the good news is, that's the easiest cable to work on. And you can see right here, we just have a little clip we need to remove and that cable pops out of there. All right, let's see if I can get this out of here on camera. There we go. All right, there is our culprit. This, uh, this is the cable. There we go. Actually, there's nothing wrong with this cable. Uh, I just needed to extend it back out a little bit. Let's go ahead and test and see if it spins. Uh, you can see the tip of the cable right here. There we go. That's actually, this cable is actually fine. Um, I don't see any shrinkage here. It just popped, it, it just popped out of the, uh, out of the slot that it's supposed to be in. That's just a matter of sticking it right back in there. Okay guys, that was uh, a, little, a little easier than I was suspecting. This, there's nothing wrong with this cable. Uh, it had just popped loose. There we go. Now we can see. See the seat is now correctly moving forward and backward. That's all that needed to be done. It had just popped loose from the from the slot. That that cable is not too short, and uh, there's nothing wrong with it. So we got this popped back in here, and let's put our clip back on. All right, let me get another tool to get that on there. Yeah, you got to pinch it like right here. Pinch it really hard, then slip it over there. It's, it's really a uh, pain in the butt. But let's go ahead and test it before we put it back in the car. These tracks should now move forward and backward. And that was our problem. Beautiful. That's working exactly how it's supposed to. So let's go ahead and get this seat back in the car. We have the steering wheel. There we go. And you can rotate it down. Then you can rotate it down. All right. Now we have to attach all our connections up front and then just bolt the seat back in. 
All right, everything is reconnected. Let's try it out. Boom. Boom. Perfect. There we go, guys. That seat is back in business. Let's pull it back in the garage. Let's change some fluids and start on the AC system. All right, we're back in the garage. I'm gonna get up on the lift so we can change some fluids. But what I went ahead and did that I did not show in the video is changed out the rubber tab. There you go. This little tab was deteriorated. So I removed the striker and changed it. And that tab basically hits the latch mechanism like a millisecond before the door shuts and allows smooth. See how nice that shuts? Uh, I'm just checking the back doors now. There's actually still a little on here. Let's see. Yeah, that one's good. Let's check this one over here. Yep, this one's still, still there in place. Yep, that one shuts good. Yeah, that one's good too. Still in place. So it was really, it was really just that driver's door. Um, but I've replaced that now. So let's go ahead and get the car up on the lift and uh, start uh, changing fluids. All right, I'm I'm just up here checking uh, some of these fluids before we just go changing everything. And that brake fluid is fresh. That is in excellent condition. I also noticed that the coolant that coolant is fresh uh, so there is no reason to change those uh, so I'm probably going to do the uh, power steering fluid and oil and uh, filter so let's go ahead and get started on that there's our old filter and the owner actually uh, pre the original owner actually included uh, a filter and oil in the trunk. So we're just gonna go ahead, put in our fresh filter. All right, we got our new gasket on there. There we go. And remember guys, when you're tightening these down, uh, it's only like, 10 foot pounds. You don't want to crank these uh, oil filter housing nuts down because these are studs. I say this in all my videos. Uh, these are studs and you don't want to pull the studs out. That's it. Just snug. That's all you do. All right, let's get this up on the lift and let's uh, drain out that oil. All right, let's get that oil out of here. All right, let's go ahead and get all these wheels off and check the brakes and get some new tires put on here. Rotors are fine. Check these brake pads. Oh yeah, we got plenty of plenty of brake pad left. These brake hoses are fine. All right, so good. All we need to do is uh. Let's check the back, but we just need to get some new uh, new tires mounted there. Wow, these these wheels are absolutely beautiful. <clears throat> yep, pads are excellent. Rotors are good. Brake hose is fine. Don't need to do anything 
Just need some new tires. And I'll go ahead and check the other side, but it's going to be the same as this side. And the same goes for the back. See how thick those pads are right there? That is the pad. Let me point it out to you on the front. That is the pad. It's like as thick as a pinky finger. And go over here. Same on the passenger side. Extremely thick brake pad. And rotors are rotors are good. So we'll get this last wheel off, load it up in the truck, and get it over to the tire shop. You guys will have to excuse the leaf blowers in the background. Uh, heavy duty diesel right there diesel motor oil 15w40 this is what the owner had been using in the vehicle so we're going to continue using it there we go all right we got full oil pressure and also heard a little bit of rattle. Um, that is going to be, yep, the rubber air cleaner mounts. So we're gonna change our air cleaner, but also wanna check those rubber mounts to make sure, make sure they're in good condition. This filter was changed. It says there's a date on it, 51811. This is from 2011. So we're going to go ahead and put in our fresh filter. Boy, that thing is stuck in there. Come on. There we go. Well, looks relatively clean. That's from 2011, but we're putting a brand new filter in there. Probably nothing wrong with that one at all. All right, we need to check these mounts. This is part of uh, general maintenance on the vehicle. And in order to get that air cleaner off, there's one band clamp down here at the bottom. Let me show you this. So basically we removed the accordion tube. Um, we undid the little rubber mounting bushing bolts. There they are right there. I'm sorry, nuts. There they are right there. And then right under here, got to take that off. Don't have to take it off, you just have to loosen it. See, we're just loosening that clamp around the intake to the turbo. And then once that is loosened, then once that is loosened, you can lift this guy up. Come on. There we go. And this slide. Come on. There we go. What that was, why that was so hard to get off is because the previous owner has installed a fresh seal right here. That's a rubber gasket. And man, that thing was super, super tight on the front of that turbo, which is good. That's what you want. That's why that was so hard to get off of there. It's, it won't be that hard once I... I'll just put a little bit of oil around it when I slip it back on there. It'll make it much easier next time. 
So we had some rattling, and that's that's cool. These are the original uh, cups around these uh, bushings here. One of these was rattling a little bit, so I need to figure out which one it is. See if we can tighten that up a little bit where it quits rattling. These, uh, these are basically little, uh, they're like heat shields. Uh, I think these are what were causing the real bad rattling sound. So I'm gonna put these in the glove box so they come with the car. And then put in some new rubber bushings here that might be a little firmer. And we'll see how that sounds. There we go. Now I'll put our uh, housing back on there. All right, like I said, the heat shields are gonna go in the, in the glove box, but I removed them because I think they were making a really bad rattling sound and you do not need them. So, we'll slide this guy back on here. There we go, that's a good fit there. Now we'll just put in our, put our 10 millimeter nuts back on here. Also, when you put this on, you gotta make sure the turbo drain tube is back here in the right spot, which it is. There's a drain tube right here, goes all the way through and drains out the bottom. And there's a tube down here on the engine that it goes into right underneath there. And I can feel that it's correctly in there. Or a new air filter. All right. Our breather tube back on. And we'll tighten this back down right here. Tighten this right like that. And then the beautiful Shannon Jones makes an entrance. Hi. I just came to say bye. Where do you go? Where are you going? Work. You look great. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Have a good night at work. Can I get a kiss before you go? Don't forget to go. I love you. Love you. <laughs> All right. There we go. Yeah, I think it was uh, a little loose. Those other, uh, you see right underneath there, that's what we replaced right here. Little rubber mounts. And I think they were a little loose and it was rattling. 
right there like that so now those are fresh mounts let's put our let's put our accordion tube back on here Tighten up our band clamp around the front of the turbo. There we go. Very nice. All right. Now that's given time for our oil to drain back to the pan after our initial startup. So let's check our oil level. So you want your oil to be, be between the two notches. We're a little on the low side. That should be good on the oil. All right, so next to service is power steering fluid. You might want to drain this out, get some fresh fluid in there. Yeah. It's still pretty red, but it started to turn brown, so we're going to change that. And we're also going to get the filter out that's down there. So power steering fluid filter, you pull out the spring and this little, uh, I'm not sure what those washers are called, um, but it's interesting the way these washers work. There you go. They look like that and you can press them down the shaft and then they'll turn sideways and they don't come back off when they're under tension. The later, uh, I think 83, 84, 85, they changed those to uh, 10 millimeter uh, nuts. Okay, we've drained out all the old power steering fluid and we're going to replace the power steering filter. And there's the original filter that was in there, so we'll throw that away and we'll get a, a new filter installed down in there. The other item we want to replace is this old, uh, there you go, there's the old pre filter and it's a little dirty. See some particles down in there. So we're going to go ahead and put a new pre-filter on there. Okay, changing this filter is pretty easy. We see there is a Phillips head screw right there. We'll go ahead and I don't know if you guys can see that. We're just loosening that Phillips head there. And then there's one right right behind let's see if I can get the camera down here okay you can barely see it but right there there's another clamp with a Phillips head so we'll need to get that one done and then we can just pull that filter off and put it all right there we go we got that nasty old filter off of there and let's grab our other filter there we go this is a genuine Mercedes filter All right, we cleaned it up a little bit down there. And there's our new filter. And let's press our primer pump. Get it primed back up and we'll, we'll go ahead. There it goes. Now we'll go ahead and fire it back up. All right, just wanted to show you guys the difference. There is a, uh, there's our original um, power steering filter. And there's our nice, fresh, new one. That's German 
Hengst. I like to use these guys. Anyway, let's get this new one in the car. Before we fire it back up, I want to put in the power steering uh, filter and put some fresh uh, ATF fluid in here. And need to put in our filter next. Okay guys, today we are evaluating this R12 system. And the original owner installed a new compressor and a new dryer with new switches. So he was maintaining this system. However, I don't think it was uh, used very often. So all the R12 had leaked out. And right now, I've got my vacuum connected to the system. We're just going to pull a vacuum. You can see we're right around negative... 30 inches of mercury. Um, see right there. Let's see if we can get behind it. There you go. See negative three zero. There you go. Negative 30. And we're going to let it sit there for about uh, 45 minutes or so. And then we're going to close our valves and turn off the vacuum pump. And we're going to let that sit overnight. And we're going to see if we come back tomorrow if that still says uh, negative 30 inches of mercury. That means we're leak free and it's good to go ahead and recharge this system. So I'll go ahead and do that process and we'll check back tomorrow. Okay, here we are the next day and you can see we are holding vacuum. There are no leaks in the system. All right, we're keeping the system under vacuum uh, for about 45 minutes or so just to make sure there's no moisture in there. Uh, and then we're gonna recharge the system. In the meantime, I wanna check this transmission fluid because just about all the fluids in this vehicle uh, were freshly changed with the exception of the uh, power steering fluid and the oil, which we, we changed those. Um, pretty sure this transmission fluid is gonna be bright red. We're gonna take a look here. Oh yeah. I don't know if you guys can see that. That is bright red, fresh transmission fluid. Yeah, it doesn't get any, any fresher than that. So no need to change that transmission fluid. Uh, that stuff's fresh. So let's go ahead and get started on this AC system. All right, so Let's turn off our vacuum pump and we're going to go ahead and recharge this. So R12 in the 126 chassis is 3.3 pounds. There you go. You can see it right there. 3.3 pounds. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect. Let's see. We'll close these back up. And here is a scale. So I have a scale and I can measure the weight of the R12. Let me go get the R12. Okay, it says 3.3 uh, pounds of R12. So here's the canister. This is a 30 pound canister. I'm not sure how much I have in it. So we'll see how much I have in it. All right. This weighs 29.5 pounds, and we're gonna put in 3.3 pounds. So 26, what is that? 26.2 pounds when we're done is what this should say. I hope I got that math right. I'll, I'll figure it out in a second. Yeah, 29.5. All right, now I gotta crank the car so our compressor will kick on once we start charging. And I will open up the valve once we start charging. All right, let's start adding our drill. Thank you. 
Here it goes. Well, I don't know if you can see the page. All right, let's see, measure how much R12 we got in there. 26.9. Let's go ahead and turn on the AC full blast and see what kind of reading we get to. All right, it is dropping. Oops, sorry guys. Sorry about the wind in the uh, microphone. I'm just trying to see what the, oh man, we are down to below 40 degrees. That is incredible. Okay, I just turned off the AC, but that is incredible. It's like 38, 39 degrees coming out of there. Uh, you know, it's only like 60 degrees outside, so that's probably why it got so cold, but that's R12 for you. Um, the coolest I think I've seen R134 is around 40 degrees, and I just saw this around 38 degrees, so this old R12 system is working awesome. All right, tomorrow it goes to detail, and uh, anyone that comes back from detail on Friday, I want to uh, take out this aftermarket radio and put back in the original radio. Okay, uh, guys, I'm in the car right now, and I actually removed the ashtray and pulled the radio out. And this uh, aftermarket radio was actually installed at the dealership uh, by Mercedes. And it looks like they put in a, 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 a different wiring harness. And uh, the harness that Mercedes put in back in, I guess it was the early 80s, um, it bypasses uh, this factory uh, fader that fades the speakers to the front and then to the, or to the back. And they wired in uh, their harness where you can use the fader right here, rear uh, to front fader. And so I've, I've made a judgment call. I don't want to tamper with that wiring harness that Mercedes put in here, uh, cause I don't want to risk messing up any of this original uh, wiring in the car, but let's go ahead and turn it on. And antenna is max. So let's check, let's check the antenna. So the antenna works excellent, and I just lubricated that. We're pretty amazing when it comes to fixing furnaces. And let's see if we can put in some music. So the way, uh, right there, there is a MEM or an ME button, and here is the seek. So you can seek to a station. Side by side. And then if you hit memory, and for example, two, well then we've stored that station on number two. And I'm actually gonna turn this system up because it sounds way better than the original Becker. And we have a fader here. So I don't know if you guys can hear that, but that fades to the rear speakers. And now we're back to the front speakers. And then there's also uh, a bass control, more bass, and, and then treble. And this system was clearly an upgrade compared to the original Becker. So I'm gonna leave that in the car. I don't wanna met, risk messing anything up. But uh, let's go ahead and I'll put the antenna back to stock position. We'll push it down a little bit. And we can see that the antenna control correctly lowered it like to half mast. So everything is wired correctly. 
and then we'll go back up to full mast. We can hear our music, our signal came back. And we have full mast on the antenna. And then if I just turn the volume off, they correctly have the antenna power wired in so the antenna closes correctly. So that's my uh, judgment call on this. I'm gonna leave that in and just put the original radio in the trunk. All right, so in the trunk, this is the uh, period correct radio. There's the Becker uh, 82 Mercedes 300 SD. There's the Becker radio, excellent condition. Uh, like I said, the one in there actually sounds better than the old Becker. But here is the uh, wiring harness. You can see there's a plug and here's all the original fittings. Like for example, that plugs into the back of the Becker and there's the speaker connection. So this is the harness that Mercedes uh, took out of the car. And here's the, here's another harness right here. And so all the original harness and wiring is included. Um, if, if you would want to put this back to factory and put this radio in, I would just recommend a high-end audio uh, shop do this. I'm not comfortable um, doing that. Anyway, uh, also there's a car cover back here. Let's see, there's the original tool kit. And the owner also included, uh, there's some diesel purge. This is from the original owner. And this is uh, diesel fuel treatment. He was adding some of this into the fuel. Um, there's a bunch of old uh, performance products, magazines. I guess these were magazines for parts or just enthusiasts. Oh, there's a parts magazine. There's the OM616, it looks like. Yeah, that's the four-cylinder. Pretty cool. Just a bunch of original magazines. That's kind of neat. Um, and then there's the, uh, some extra oil, 15W40. Uh, here's a bunch of, uh, filters, extra oil filters. And, uh, here's some STP, uh, diesel fuel treatment and injector cleaner. So all this stuff comes with the car. That's from the original owner. Oh, and here's a Bosch, uh, a Bosch fuel filter. So we'll just put all that back in here. Uh, but just wanted you to see the original radio there. That's going to be safely in the trunk, and we'll go with the car. And I just lifted up the uh, trunk cover here. You can see there's the original spare. That's never been out of the car. That's an original tire still on that original spare. That's incredible. And uh, there's the, uh, the jack. Such good condition. All right, guys, so that is it for servicing of the 1982 300SD. The car really didn't need that much. It's in excellent condition. But uh, tomorrow, I uh, take the car over to Scott, and I'm sure you guys have seen some of Scott's detailing videos. He's going to buff, polish, add the protective coating onto the paint, uh, shampoo carpets, that kind of stuff, and just do a, a final detail job on this vehicle. So uh, I'll record some of that process and show you guys in the next video. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and we will see you next time. Take care.